What are the conditions in that particular camp, Carl? Well, this Roma camp is on the edge of town um, and it's home to about 70 or 80 Roma families. The conditions are very basic. These homes, uh, set up with the help of European Union funding, uh, um, are metal prefabricated structures. They were only ever intended as temporary housing, but now people have been living in them now for about 10 years. In most cases, there's no running water inside and there are also no toilets inside either. So conditions certainly are basic and the people who live in these homes say that in the summer they're very hot, in the winter uh, they are very cold as well. But of course the real hardship here comes when you consider that a lot of the uh, families here, either the male or the female of the family, are unemployed. There is very little income coming here. Yes, sometimes they get odd jobs picking fruit in the fields, other times collecting scrap metal. But it really is the low income that forces most of these families to live below the poverty line, Halla. And, and what's been the reaction to the story of Maria, which has, of course, brought the spotlight back on the Roma community in parts of Europe, including Greece? You've spoken to people who knew the couple who were looking after her. What did they say about these, quote, parents of Maria? Well, absolutely. I would say across the board that the Roma community here in Fasla has been incensed by these media reports because they believe that there are uh, overtones of racism, overtones of uh, prejudice. I just want to take you inside into the home of, of, of uh, Vasiliki. And uh, we were talking to her earlier. And she, like a lot of the families here, uh, her family knew the couple that were looking after Maria and also knew Maria personally. She said she was a normal little girl. She always came along to the fiestas. She often came to this house herself and was playing here. And, uh, and she says that the child was a normal child and that the couple who were looking after her were loving substitute parents. She says yes from her understanding. The mother, the biological mother was Bulgarian who simply couldn't look after Maria any longer and left her here in this community. Uh, but Vasiliki says she's now 15 years old and she says she's grown up in different Roma camps and she says in her experience she hasn't heard of the first case of child trafficking in any of the camps that she's grown up in Halla. All right Carl finally the wider question of Roma communities all across Europe who face very tough issues and who say they are targets of racism and discrimination what are they telling you as this story has made headlines around the world? Well, marginalization is a very real problem, and in some cases it's a bit of a dichotomy because the Roma families that we've spoken to say that they do prefer to live alongside other Roma families within a Roma community because they say that they share similar values, similar culture. They also have their own language, the Roma language. They, uh, they party in the same way, they hold the same fiestas, and also there's a, a, a very broad family and clan structure that makes them feel at home. So on the one hand, they feel marginalized by society, but they do prefer to live on their own but they also feel discriminated against because they say as soon as anything goes wrong in the wider community whether it's a robbery possibly a drug problem or in this case the case of Maria they say that they feel society points the finger at them and says oh this is the gypsies once again and so they do uh, feel that discrimination